Hi, welcome back to Unit 5 here in AP Physics C. Um, we're going to look at rotational dynamics in this video. Um, so rotational dynamics is kind of the, ro the rotational uh, equivalent to when we did Newton's laws of motion. So what we can start with is by writing Newton's second law um, using rotational quantities, right? And so in the first video, we talked about torque and how we, talk, we, we sum them in our, in our static scenario, okay? Um, and so... If we know Newton's second law linearly is the sum of the forces is equal to ma, but remember the rotational equivalent of mass is moment of inertia, and the rotational equivalent of acceleration is angular acceleration, and the rotational equivalent of force is torque. So all we just like we did in the last video where we just simply flipped out the the value or the variables from linear to rotation, we do the same thing here. Okay. Um, and one thing to know is that the further you're away from the axis of rotation, again, is the greater the torque. Um, now, the process for solving rotational dynamics questions are very similar to linear dynamics questions. Um, again, it's draw, sum, solve. But instead of calling it a free body diagram now, we're going to call it a rigid body diagram. Um, although you may hear me slip up and say free body diagram, free body diagram. But in actuality, it's a rigid body diagram. Um, so that's our draw step. Uh, and one thing when you do this step, make sure you identify the axis of rotation because you need to make sure of that because if, if a force is acting at the, at the axis of rotation, we don't have to worry about that in terms of its torque. Um, the next part, sum. Now, in addition to summing the forces, we have to now sum the torques. So we would write sum of F equals MA, and then somewhere else we would say sum of the torques equals I alpha. When we do this, remember these two, alpha and A, are related in the equation A equals R alpha, or you can solve that for alpha and say alpha equals A over R, okay? Because you may have to substitute that in at some point in time, um, especially if you're looking for the acceleration of a system, not the angular acceleration of a system. And then finally, solve for what you're looking for, right? So you may have to do something on the torque side and substitute into the force side or find something on the force side, substitute in the torque. You may have to do something in the X um, force side, substitute in the horizontal Y side, you know, and, and it just, that's why these problems get a little bit more involved. Um, and also in dynamics, we'll also talk just really briefly about uh, energy as well. So most motion that is encountered will have translational and rotational components. Um, well, this also holds true for energy. And so the rotational kinetic energy now is something that we have to factor in. And rotational kinetic energy, and we'll put a sub R there, is one half I omega squared. So what that does now, in addition to having our translational kinetic energy, which is one half MV squared, we now also have our rotational kinetic energy, which is our one half I omega squared, plus any potential energy, right? And you treat it no differently than we did it way back in unit three um, when we did the work energy power unit, right? We first said every, we first said that delta E equals zero, and then we just simply substituted in this equation in final and initial, and then canceled things out. The reason why we didn't see the KR before is because we didn't assume rotating objects. Um, so if you do an experiment with the ball rolling down an incline, you can make that um, analysis better by factoring in the rotational aspect of the, of the object now. Um, now, if we have rotational energy, then we have rotational work, okay? And just, you know, basic work is torque delta theta, just like, so it's, at, it's um, F times D. But remember, we can also do this as an integral torque d theta. Um, and so if you look at the, the good old wheel of fortune, so she is going to apply a force at an angle, right? Here's our R, right? 
and they may ask like, okay, so how much is she accelerating if she has a, a force of F, right? Um, and so that there you would have to use your rotational and your um, your linear translational uh, summings and then solve for what you're looking for, okay? So let's look at an example problem using this rotational dynamics. All right, so here we have a string wrapped around a pulley in the figure uh, applied a constant downward force of 50 Newtons. The radius and the moment of inertia of the pulley are 0 0.10 and 2.5 times 10 to the negative third kilograms meters squared. If the string does not slip, what is the angular velocity of the pulley after one meter of string has unwound? Assume the pulley starts from rest. All right, so the first thing we need to do, right, is if we draw a rigid body diagram, right? We only we have two forces acting on this object. Well, really, we we have three. So we have the force applied. Now you can see the rigid body diagram. The difference is now instead of drawing the forces from the center of mass, we're drawing them from where they are acting. So that force is all the way out on our pulley, right? So I'm going to draw it all the way out on my rigid body diagram. So then I have mg. And then I have like this support force, right? So the support force is provided by that pin. And those two are at our axis of rotation, okay? Now, what that does in the long run, when we sum the torques, we don't have to account for those in the torque, okay? Um, and so now what we do is simply write down some of the forces equals MA, some of the torques equals I alpha, and what we want to do is we want to solve this for, we can do attack this a couple ways. We may want to find acceleration, right? The linear acceleration, or we may want to find the angular acceleration. We want to find the angular acceleration because they're asking for an angular quantity in return. So this is kind of like that, you know, that area where they kind of come together, right? So if I'm summing the forces, that doesn't change. Right, I still just treat it as if it was everything was drawn from the center of mass. So I have this support force minus the weight uh, minus the force equals ma. Right now, the good thing is on this question, we don't worry have to worry too much about that side of it because everything we can find on the other side. Um, and so now it's sum the torques, and because this is my axis of rotation, right those two forces do not provide a torque to the system. So now I only have uh, the, sorry, I put uh, F, I should be running a torque. So now I have the torque provided by our pull force, and that's gonna cause it to spin. If I pull down on that end, it's gonna cause it to spin counterclockwise, so it's gonna be positive, and that's gonna be equal to I alpha. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, I'm gonna solve this equation for alpha. So alpha equals torque over I. And they give me I, which is good, because if they didn't give it to us, we'd have to do some more algebra. Um, so I know this is going to be RF, right, times F over I. And you do have to be careful that sometimes they'll give you that in centimeters, but this is in meters. So I'm going to do 0 0.1 times 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by, oh, sorry, my F is not 2.1 times negative 3. My force is 50. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. All right, now I'm back. Sorry about that. So our force is 50 Newtons, and now this is where the 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 is, okay? So it's going to be an angular acceleration of, did I write it down? Uh, I did. No, I didn't. Did I? No. I found it later. So it's going to be 2,000 um, radians per second squared, okay? So now what we need to do is figure out, we know that it's going to pull one meter of string. So we need to figure out like how far does one meter of string actually go? So I need to find my delta theta, right? How far did, you know, did the pulley rotate? And so that's going to be X over R. 
and so it's going to be one meter over 0 0.1 because that's my radius and that is going to be 10 uh, radians so it spun 10 complete radians around and now I can use this and um, find my final my oh, it should be a theta my final um, angular velocity. So starts from rest, so that goes away. So and then so omega will be the square root of two alpha delta theta. So it's gonna be the square root of two times ten. Right. Sorry, that's my delta theta times two thousand. So two times ten times two thousand. And then I'm gonna take the square root of that. And it's going to give me two hundred radians per second. You can also, I know, I know, I went and did all this to find delta theta. You can also assume that hey, um, the only problem is we don't have. I would say we don't have time, so you couldn't attack it with this equation. Okay, we don't have time. Um, you could probably find the time that it takes, but it's a, that's going to be a little bit more, but. Remember, that's where I used my relationship equation there. Okay, so now we're going to move into the last video where we're going to talk about angular momentum.